Hi everyone, it's Gabby here. I'm gonna walk you through a design tutorial to show you how to pin items to the top of a list. This is really popular to make things more convenient for your users to kind of hang on to any favorites. And I'm actually gonna show you two different ways to do this. So the first way is this. I have a list of products here and I'm gonna click on this pin icon to the right. Let's do this for product D. So I'll click on that. It's gonna move product D to the top of the list. You can see we're also highlighting the background of that row changing the look of the pin to make it very clear to the user. Let's do the same thing for product G and also product B, right? So it's the same list, just sorted in a different way where we're prioritizing the pinned items to always keep them at the top. No matter how long the rest of the list is, the pinned items will always be at the top there. And I can of course undo this. So if I remove product G, product D, doesn't matter the order that I'm going in, it's just placing everything back in the original list. You can see that the original list is sorted alphabetically here. Okay, so this is the first approach and I'm gonna show you exactly how we accomplish this now. So let's first take a look at the data structure real quick. I am working with my data type called product. You can do this with any data type. This just happens to be the data type that my list is of, right? I have a list of products and I have a simple uh, name field here to display that in the repeating group. And then under the user data type, I have a list field called pinned products, right? This is a list of products, a list of whatever data type that you're working with. So that way, whenever the user clicks on this icon, they're going to trigger a workflow that adds that item to the list of products in the user record. That way it's unique to each user. Uh, you know, one user may have five products pinned, another user may have none, another user may have a different five or two or however many they want to pin, right? So this field here is important to keep things unique to the user and keep track of what they've pinned. So now let's look at design. So here's my repeating group. The type of content is product and the data source is the first part of getting this interaction in place. I am referencing the current users pinned products, that's that list field, and I am merging it with the rest of the products that I want to display in this repeating group. In my case, I'm just gonna be doing a general search for products and I'm sorting by the name. So when the user doesn't have anything pinned, right, this field will be empty and we're really just left with the result of the search. However, if I do have something pinned, then Bubble is going to display those first because that's how it's written here in this expression. Bubble's gonna display it as you've, uh, in the order that you've uh, created the merging. The pinned products first, then any other remaining products um, that, uh, are, that are a result of this search here. You won't end up with any duplicates from these two uh, because Bubble will strip out any duplicates uh, after it creates this final list here, right? It's combining pinned products with the result of the search. So the products can show up in both places, but Bubble's only going to show them once in your list and it will prioritize pinned products first, right? From the user record, because it's written first in the expression. If I had reversed this where I did the search first and then merge with the current user's pin products, the user's pin products would have been at the end of the list. Okay, so when you come from a list value, you have the option to merge it with another list value, right? I'm taking two lists and combining them together. So that's the data source so that it displays properly in the repeating group. Now, the icon over here, um, this is how this was set up. So by default, it's gonna display this outline version of the push pin. Um, you can, of course, use a different icon if you wanna use a star or a bookmark, it's up to you. Uh, and I've got it colored uh, gray so that it's a little clearer that uh, this has not been selected. And then in the condition, I have when the current user's pinned products, that's the list of products, contains the parent group's product, right? So if that list contains this rows product or the parent group's product, then I change the appearance of the pin. It's a filled in push pin and I have a, a color change here, okay? So if I preview, you can see that, turning that on and off so we can preview that uh, appearance change, okay? So now in the workflow, so let's go to the workflow here for the push pin. I have two versions of this, okay? So when this is clicked, and only when the current user's pinned products doesn't contain the parent group's product, then we're gonna modify the user record and add the parent group's product to the user's list of pinned products, right? I'm modifying the user record, specifically the pinned products field, and I'm adding the parent group's product. That's only if that list doesn't already have it there, okay? And then we have the opposite. So this other one over here is just the opposite condition and the opposite action. So if it already contains the parent group's product, then the modification we're making is that we're removing it. 
That's how we're able to get it to the top of the list or in the main list, simply because uh, of our data source and the order that we've written everything here. Okay, so that's the first design approach to pinning items. Okay, real quick here. If you're finding this helpful, we have so much more to teach you over in our free extended workshop at coachingnocodeapps.com slash workshop, where we'll guide you through our four-phased approach for going from idea to app. So if you're looking for a start to finish guide, go ahead and register for that workshop right after this video. You'll get immediate access. For now, let's get back to our lesson. Now I'm gonna take you through the second design approach for pinning items. So here I have a repeating group that's actually scrollable. So imagine, you know, this would be a good use case for a bigger list. And if I wanted to pin, let's say product E, it's going to move it to the top of my uh, scrolling list and actually stay fixed in place there. This way, if I do have a big list to move through, I don't lose my pinned items. So let's do product C, product B. You can see that those products are actually disappearing um, from the, the bottom. Now you don't have to have them disappear. I'm gonna show you in a second here. If you want to see them in the pinned list up above, but also in the main list down below, I'll show you where you would make that adjustment. But this is gonna be really helpful if you have a super, super big list that you know would prevent the user from keeping track of what they've pinned already. This is in fact something that, uh, you know, a lot of browser windows will also have this functionality. So over here on the left side, I have two browser windows open, my preview and my editor. If I right click and click on pin, you see how it moves it up to the top and kind of uh, collapses it down. I mean, we can do the same thing. I have a very different design here to display those products. This is more of a card uh, as opposed to, you know, these rows here. And uh, if I had many more browser tabs open, you know, this pinned item would stay at the top there, along with any other items that I wanna pin uh, just in this top row. So I can also unpin it like that. So that's exactly the functionality that we're creating here, um, uh, you know, with this design. So let's jump into the editor. So the way that I'm doing this is I have two repeating groups. The bottom repeating group is gonna have my main list. Okay, so let's go over here. Now this is just going to be the search for products, you know, my primary list. I do have it sorted by name and I'm removing the current user's pinned products. I'm using the minus list operator right, which is an operator that uh, you get when you have a list value, minus list, anything that's in the current user's pin product. So it's extracting those so we don't see them down here. If you don't want them to be removed, then you can just leave that part out. You can just have the full search so that it shows the full list every single time, okay? Um, and and you, you wouldn't have the minus list part there. Now my repeating group up top, this is a separate repeating group, this is just going to show the current user's pin products. And because this is its own repeating group, I can design this very differently, you know, to present that item there. So you can have a mix and match of, you know, the two lists in one single repeating group or in separate ones, uh, depending on how you want to design it. If I kept things in the main list, I could still, you know, design the, the cells so that it would be colored even as I move through, you know, through down here. Let me actually show you real quick. I think I have that set up already. So let's remove minus list and I'm gonna refresh the page here. It should still highlight so that it's, you know, as the user scrolling, just like that, they can still see what's pinned even as they're moving through this list in this way. Okay, so it's really up to you. You can kind of mix and match those functions. And because these are two separate repeating groups, the workflows um, don't need to have dual purpose uh, off of each icon. Basically, when I click on this pin in this list, it always means that I'm going to pin. Um, so if I click on that, it's going to make a change and add the parent group's product versus this pin up here, because this is the pinned items list, clicking on this icon always means that it's going to remove that pin. Now, actually, I should say that if you do choose to include the pinned items in the main list, then you will need that dual purpose here because technically I should be allowed to pin and unpin you know, from this one place. But if you're extracting them, then really this is just about pinning and then the top list is about unpinning. So now you have two different ways to display pinned items. Get creative with it and see how it can best fit in your app. All right, I hope that was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to register for that free extended training over at coachingnocodeapps.com slash workshop. You'll get immediate access as soon as you register. And the link for that is in the description below. Okay, happy building.